Hi everyone, welcome to another video tutorial on YouTube channel of tutorialspedia.com. In this video, I will talk about one of the most popular open source API management platforms, WSO2 API Manager. And I will explain step by step how we can use this API Manager 3.0 offered by WSO2 to publish APIs, how we can subscribe to the APIs and how clients can consume those APIs. Before I proceed with this tutorial, you are kindly requested to subscribe to the channel if you haven't subscribed before so that you are able to get latest videos when uploaded. So here is the detail of all the steps that I will be performing during this video tutorial. Firstly, I will go through uh, the API Manager Publisher Portal and I will publish a REST API. For this purpose, I will uh, utilize one of the publicly available JSON based REST service and I will create API based on that. After that, I will apply certain policies on this API to throttle the traffic to a specific limit and I will also show you how you can use other uh, design time and runtime options available through WSO2 API Publisher. For example, I will explain how we can use caching mechanism for a better throughput and we will also see how we can do the documentation for the APIs. Once API has been published, I will go to the development portal, uh, which was previously called as uh, API Store in previous version of WSO2 API Manager. And I will show you how we can create application, how we can create general uh, access tokens and based on the access tokens, which can be either OAuth token or JWT, we can subscribe to those published APIs and use those APIs and call them from the client side. So for end-to-end -end testing for this uh, REST API, I will use any client. You can use Postman, you can use SOAP UI, or even you can create your own in any programming language. So without further ado, let's directly jump into the actual part of this tutorial and see how we can publish API using WSO2 API Publisher. All right, so I have already opened API Publisher uh, for WSO2 API Manager. As you can see, I am currently on the login screen. So let's log in by the default username and password. And once you enter your username and password, this is the first page that you see after logging uh, login in to the API Manager. So here you have uh, different options available and uh, in order to create the API, you can just click on this create API and you see various options. You can design a new REST API. You can uh, use an existing REST API and by importing the Swagger definition of that, you can create your APIs. If you have a SOAP backend and you want to have a SOAP pass-through API, you can use that. And there are certain other options as well uh, using Graph, GraphQL, SQL schema, and you can also design and prototype a new WebSocket API as well. So for our case, we will use this option of designing a new REST API and I will click on this. And now I come to a page where I'm asked to enter certain details for the API. So first thing I will give it a name and the name will be, let's name it as users API. And context, this is, uh, this context will define what will be the prefix of the API or uh, According to this, you will have to create certain APIs later. So any API that you create must have a unique context. So I will name it as slash test. And here you can specify version. WSO2 API Manager provides you option to create certain versions of API. For example, if you have created one API and you want to publish another version of the same API, you can create, uh, you can publish that with a different version. So this one I will create it with version one. And here in the endpoint, you are going to specify the backend endpoint where this API will be pointing to. So for the purpose of this uh, tutorial, I will use this JSON placeholder, which provides us uh, certain fake APIs, public APIs that you can utilize. So here I will use this uh, users API, which provides us details of the users. So this uh, API, this uh, backend REST API provides us information about the users in JSON format. So let's use this API for our purpose. So in the endpoint, I'll provide the URL and clicking on this uh, tick mark, you can verify that it's accessible. 
here you can specify the business plan for your API. <coughs> Sorry, where you basically specify whether uh, you want to restrict users for certain level, uh, number of uh, API calls per minute, or if you want to keep it unlimited. You can give multiple options as well, uh, which will be available to the clients when they will go, they will be using uh, developer portal to subscribe. So right now, let's put it as once, which allows a maximum of 1,000 requests per minute, and just click on this create button. Now, after creation, uh, you can see that uh, our API status is created, but it's not published. We have to do certain other things. So we go to this design configuration. Here you can change your uh, uh, icon of your API as well. Let's uh, use any of those. Let's use this one. You can use any of these available, or you can you even upload your own uh, custom uh, image as well. Here you can pro provide certain description of API. Test API, which returns the user details. And publisher access control. So this access control is a very good feature in WSO2 API Manager, where you can restrict uh, this the certain APIs on uh, your developer portal, as well as on publisher level, who can see and who can uh, use this, uh, these APIs. So on the publisher, by default, it's available to all. But if you create certain roles using the management console, then you can specify certain roles which are allowed to see these, uh, these, these APIs. So right now I will keep it as uh, default and uh, it will be available to any user who logs into the publisher. And on the developer portal also, you can restrict it so that, uh, for example, if you have uh, 10 different clients, you can specify certain clients with different roles uh, who, are not, who are able to access these uh, APIs and who can subscribe to these APIs. And here you can specify certain tags like user's API, test it like anything and then this make this as default version so this is another good feature uh, if you have multiple versions of uh, your api you can create consider one of them as default version so that if a user uh, tries to invoke the uh, resource access the resources of this api without specifying the version it will hit to the default version so let's make it a default version so as we stated version one for this API. So now if a user uh, will invoke the operations of this uh, API, if he doesn't specify any version by default, it will come to this one. So we just save it. And now we go to runtime configurations. Here you have different options available. For example, you can have transport level security specified. So whether you want HTTPS, you want HTTP or you want mutual assistance. Let's restrict it to HTTPS only for now. And uh, you can have application level security as well, OAuth, basic, API key, and we will keep it as default for, for now. Here you have backend throughput, which you can use. If you have a backend which you know has certain limitations, it, it can access, uh, it can uh, entertain only a certain number of uh, hits per second, you can control that from here. If we specify here, for example, if you specify that uh, our backend can have maximum of five transactions per second. And this is for sandbox, this is for production. So for sandbox, we can make it free. This means that for, for this scenario, we are, we are considering our backend as a very loose backend, which can accept only three transactions per second at sandbox and five at production level. And after that, there are certain other mediation policies that you can also use uh, to mediate and make any uh, customizations or any uh, different changes that you want at the payload level. For example, converting converting from JSON to XML, and there are certain other policies that you can uh, select from here. Uh, we will not use mediation policies in this uh, uh, tutorial. We will cover it in some other tutorial later. For the response caching, if you enable it, then you can specify caching timeout. And, uh, uh, if uh, you specify like uh, here we specify 300 which means 300 seconds uh, five minutes so for five minutes any response that we receive from the backend will be cached cached uh, in our uh, api manager and any subsequent calls to the same uh, resource will be uh, entertained from the cache data instead of calling the backend again and again let's make it 60 so that we want to cache it only for one minute and we just save it Next, uh, we want to go create the resources for our API. By default, it has created uh, one resource for each type of uh, HTTP verb. We delete all and we will create our own. So we will choose HTTP verb as get. 
and here we will speci specify users and we will click plus we also want to have another uh, resource where we want to select specific user user slash we will create a path variable user id and we will click on this plus button now if you go here you can see we have two resources added user and an another one with for a specific user where we have a user id as a path variable so we will just save it we have created two resources for our api and now in the endpoint we want to specify sandbox and production let's consider it as production and we will uh, just uh, uncheck this option for the sandbox we can do load balancing and fault tolerance here as well if we have multiple uh, backend servers available for the same same uh, service but in our case we have only one url publicly available so we will not do this we will just save it now we go to the life cycle and we can see that our api's life cycle is currently uh, showing that it's in created state but it's not published so once we will click on this publish we will see that our api will be in the published state so now this api has been published this api should be available in developer portal there are certain other options as well for example you can have scopes and using scopes you can uh, restrict uh, access uh, based on roles for certain resources within the apis as well for example uh, right now we created this users uh, api which has two resources uh, one uh, to get all the users and another one to get user based on the user id and we can restrict access to these based on the roles as well we will not be doing here in this case but i'm just explaining you for understanding purpose and then if you go to this document section you can see that we can add new documents as well like we create a new how to document and we will just write how to con use this api and here in the summary we will just write user guide for users api and we will just add this document and we go back to listing and now if we click on this edit uh, sorry edit content and now you you can put all the details about this api this guide i will just write one or two lines to use this api to use this api make sure you enter a valid authentication key so i'm not writing anything else just keep it simple and that's it from uh, publisher side now we will go to the developer portal and we will subscribe to this api so for developer portal i have already let me sign out and sign in again so this is the developer portal since we did not specify any uh, restriction for our api uh, when creating so by default even for a public user it's it's, it's showing here but in order to use it we will have to sign into the user into the developer portal so i'm logging in with the default user and you will see that api that we published through the publisher is showing here first thing is that we need to go to the application we have a default application already if you click on this application you can see that it has access token it has consumer key and if we generate access token here we can specify the validity if you put minus one then it will be uh, an unlimited period so this is the access token for this uh, uh, application so we just close it for now and we go to the api and subscribe to this api click on this api users api and uh, here you see the option subscribe to an application so we click on this subscribe to an application we choose the application since we have only one default application throttling policy when we created when we published the api we chose we selected only bronze so that's the only one showing here so we just click on this subscribe option and we have subscribed to this api now if we want to consume this api we will have to get the key so we go to this fraud key we clicked on this fraud key and let's regenerate to make sure that we get a fresh uh, key you can use the existing one but i just want to create a new one and close it now we have the key 
and there is a tryout option here as well you can see and it gives details of all the uh, resources available and this is the URL localhost 8243 test slash one one is the version so instead of trying it from here I will use a client I will use SOAP UI and access this service and consume this service resources from there I have SOAP UI already open I will choose rest and HTTPS localhost colon 8243 slash test slash one which is a version even if you don't specify version it will work because we specified the version as default version slash users so I want to get all the users and in order to uh, access this uh, API resource I need to provide the uh, authorization in, in the header so I will create a new header with the name authorization and in the value I will write b error this is the syntax for this uh, API manager b error space and then I will just paste the uh, token that I copied from the uh, developer port I will just click here and you can see I received the response in JSON format where I'm getting all the users now I want to get only a certain user for example I want to get a user with the ID 10 means I want to get this user with the username Moria 1020 so let's provide slash 10 and click you can see I received a response for only this user with the ID 10. All right, so this is how you can use this uh, uh, open source API management platform of WSO2. It's a very great uh, product, and they are always enriching this product with new features and new versions, enhancements. They have a great support model, and uh, this is an open source uh, API management platform but you can get their subscription for support as well and they have great support teams and this uh, another great thing about this WSO2 API manager is that it has a lot of uh, online resources available their documentation is also quite handy and quite useful and uh, you can see that look and feel of this uh, product is also quite uh, user friendly and uh, there are certain uh, other aspects of this application which I cannot cover during this uh, small tutorial as it has an analytics platform where you can see all the analytics and dashboards for all the usage and uh, you can generate reports based on that also it has options to monetize your APIs to uh, generate revenue out of it and uh, also uh, this application can be uh, utilized in a hybrid uh, cloud and uh, on-premise environment or you can make it completely cloud and also you can have it uh, with a with, in a more uh, clustered approach where different components of this API management platform you can have on multiple machines for your production environment so overall this is a very great uh, application and great uh, API management platform which has quite a good reach worldwide and quite popular so that's it from this tutorial uh, if you have any question if you have any feedback feel free to comment below and also don't uh, forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't subscribed before and uh, we will try to make sure that we get more and more videos like this for you in our tutorial in our channel in the future thank you very much